Hey guys, how's it going? Bampy here, and today I'm going to be playing this demo of this visual novel called Dragon Date. Now, I said this at the end of the video, but I want to say it again before we actually start playing, um, that this is a game that's currently on Kickstarter. It's So if you want to go over there and you want to back this game on Kickstarter, definitely, definitely do it. Any little bit ha helps, and... Um, I'm super duper excited about this. I backed the game myself on Kickstarter and I really want this game to happen after I've played it. So um, definitely go over there and check it out. So let's get started. I'm sure you're excited to get started, but first a few questions so we can tune the adventure to your liking. What gender would you prefer to be? But um, I'll be a girl, since I am a girl. What is your full name? Vampy Unicorn. Oh, is there no space? Okay, no. We'll just do Vampy then. No. What is your nickname? Vampy. Great. Now a quick piece of advice. Dragon Date was designed to be lenient towards mistakes, and we highly recommend keeping that in mind as you play. Even if you make some poor decisions or lose a fight, it's still very possible to achieve the best ending. Therefore, the, for the sake of immersion, we m recommend playing through your first time without returning to a previous save. Thank you, and enjoy the game, Mari. Alright. Oh, that's a little loud, but that's because my volume is all the way up on my headphones. Okay. Today was the day we're finally... Today was the day you were finally starting off on the adventure you'd always dreamed of. It was the last... It was time to begin your life as a dragon caretaker. Or so you thought. You've been waiting at a meeting spot for over, for a little over an hour, and so far, no one had shown up. Maybe it was too good to be true, you thought aloud. Mulling it over, you couldn't help but reflect on the events that brought you here. It was late in the afternoon at a local tavern and you'd just gotten back after completing an, ass an assassination request. Jesus, we're badass. This was the easiest kind of work to find, unfortunately. And to be honest, it made you feel a little sick. Turns out being an adventurer wasn't all it cracked up to be. The hours were long, and you pretty much had to take whatever work you could find. Not only that, but there were slim pickings, so everyone generally worked alone. No reason to split what little money you could earn with a group. Put simply, your childhood dreams had been thoroughly beaten down by the last seven years of adventuring. Hey Vampy, what's that story you're always telling about dragons? You let out a sigh and took another long drink before replying. I'm in no mood today, Azumi. You passed her your now empty goblet, and she smirked before refilling it. Is that right? Shame. Thought you might be thought it might be right up your alley. Azumi waved a piece of paper around, giving you a mischievous grin. However, before she could pull it away, you snatched it right out of her hand. Boo, you're no fun. To think I finally had some good news too. Azumi scowled at you, but you hardly heard what she said. You were quickly lost in the request. Someone was hiring a dragon caretaker? What did that even mean? The only requirements were basic combat abilities and knowledge of dragons. It was all pretty interesting to say the least, and it kind of sounded too good to be true. Yo Azumi, is this legit? What's that? I thought you weren't in the mood. The bartender teased. With a sigh, you easily gave in to Azumi's demands. I'm sorry I was short with you. Now where did you get this? Smiling triumphantly, Azumi leaned in a bit closer. An actual dragon came in to drop off the request. Can you believe that? You stared wide-eyed at Azumi for a moment until the room erupted in laughter. Oh wow, a real dragon? That's amazing! Yeah, wish I was here when that happened. So before we continue, I think the little like characters on screen, 
I know that there is a tier where if you donate so much on Kickstarter, you can create a character, I think. So I think that's what that means. I'm not sure though. I'm not entirely sure. That's just what I'm assuming. Um, yeah, I wish I was here when that happened. This spurred another round of laughter and clearly you were the butt of the joke. After another few moments of this, the bar died down and Izumi explained. There are a bunch of dragons living pretty much right down the street. Honestly, I'm surprised you haven't bumped into one by now, but I guess you're out of town a lot. There are... wait, what? It took a f second to fully process what she was saying. How is this the first time I'm hearing of this? The bartender shrugged before replying. Well, you usually just pop in to grab a drink and pick up a request. Then we don't see you for another week. Don't be too put off, though. Despite all that I think you'd be perfect for the job. Had you really been th that standoffish? Maybe there was some truth that, to what she was saying after all. In that case, you felt kind of touched she saw something in you. This whole situation reminded you of why you tried to be an adventurer to begin with. Excitement. Discovery. Friendship. Your dream was potentially right in front of you. Although you weren't entirely sure this would, this was the break you were looking for, you decided to give it a shot. It could be your chance at a different life. Again, or so you thought. Now you were wondering if Azume was just screwing with you. Waiting around and looking like an idiot was absolutely worth the risk, though. Your ears perked up as you heard a slight wishing noise. You look left and right for a moment before finding the source. The artwork in this is just gorgeous. Looking up, you saw a beautiful woman floating amongst the treetops, held aloft with impressive wings. I'm so sorry I'm late, the woman yelled, flying closer to you. No problem, you shouted back, shaking off your shock. This dragon wasn't expecting what you were expecting. Then again, that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. With a flick of her wings, the girl hovered a bit closer to you. So you're the new caretaker. Nice to meet you. That's me, and likewise. You extended your hand, and she flew close and shook it. You could feel the scales on the back, but otherwise it was soft and warm. Name's Leary, by the way. Vampy. With that, Leary landed next to you gracefully. Well, let's be on our way then, shall we? With a warm smile, the girl started walking, gesturing for you to follow. I'm so glad we found finally found someone. We've been sending requests to all the local taverns. I'm surprised there was someone so close by it, though. I know we didn't have the best reputation in town. I suck at reading, oh my god. Leary didn't seem too inclined to elaborate on that. It didn't seem like people at the tavern were too put off. But then again, they didn't take the jobs themselves. You decided right away not to dwell on any rumors. Better to assess the situation yourself. For the moment, you walked beside the rather attractive dragon, contemplating what to say next. Hmm, okay, so we have a chance to say, you have a bad reputation, so what are other dragons like? What will I be doing? Are all dragons as cute as you? Or in the conversation? Um, I'm gonna say, so what other, what are other dragons like? Leary's face lit up slightly as she contemplated what to say. Well, they're all quite different. Pitch is silly and loves to party. Anna is super cute. Ketla can be scary, and she's actually nice deep down. Rix is a bit of a homebody, but she, and she writes these cute little stories. I probably shouldn't talk about them behind their backs too much, though. Just know they're all good girls. Leary kind of had an expression of motherly pride as she talked about the other dragons. Um, so what will I be doing? This job is actually pretty easy, but hard to explain. You'll kind of do a bit of everything, but your main job is security. Basically, just be, just be sure to keep dragons and humans from hurting each other. Sounded simple enough. Although, the idea of doing whatever they needed sound a bit, sounded a bit weird. You were apparently more of a servant than a caretaker. Don't let a race war break out, got it? 
Leary stared at you wide-eyed for a second before realized you were joking. She giggled for several reasons before replying. Yes, that would be bad indeed. Okay, um, I don't know if I want to say that or not, because it's like blatantly flirting. I'll, I'll just say it. L what? Leary was blushing intensely as she stuttered to herself. You're too kind. You could definitely do better than an old dragon like me. So you're going to answer the question. So are you going to answer the question? With a sigh, she decided to play along. Yes, in fact, they're even cuter. Wow, they must be real goddesses to be cuter than you. Leary was getting increasingly flustered. Don't be dumb. Despite her rebuttal, she was still smiling as she walked a bit ahead of you. Before long, you two had arrived at the Velvet Moon Ranch. Your first impression was pretty good. The place seemed well-maintained and had a very lived-in look at it. Not too shabby, right? Leary mirrored your thoughts, staring fondly at her home. Sorry, I, I got a little lost there. Sorry. Um... It was nice she'd gotten over your flirt attack. Yeah, I like it already. Leary beamed at you for a moment before continuing. Here, I'll show you where you'll be living. With that, Leary led you down the path. You casually observed your surroundings as you walked, taking stock of the creepy forest, the old school training yard, the large ba barn, and what appeared to be a living quarters. Finally, you arrived at the smallest and least maintained building. You could only describe it as a shack. Based on Leary's expression as she turned back to you, this is where you'd be living. Welcome back! You walked into the shack only to discover another girl sitting on your bed. She greeted Leary, Leary half-heartedly and hardly seemed to notice your presence. I've decided I'm taking this house. Leary blinked a few times before rubbing her temples. What? It's fine, right? You can just have her live with you guys. We've been over this, Anna. Anna or Anna. I'm gonna say Anna. Okay. Dragons sleep in the dormitory, and the caretaker sleeps out here. <laughs> um, I'll just say I don't mind if we trade. See, she's fine with it. Let's totally do it. Leary let out a big sigh before continuing. Could you not encourage her, Vampy? I'm sorry, I was just being nice. She wanted she wanted the, the shack. I'll give her the shack. Yeah, don't encourage me, whelp. Anna gives Leary a smug look as the older dragon resumed rubbing her temples. I can't decide between Anna and Anna. I'll say Anna. Anna will use Anna will sleep in the dorm and Vampy will sleep here. End of story. Despite Anna's pouting, Leary seemed to be putting her foot down. It seemed difficult to argue with her because I said so logic, so both you and Anna fell quiet. Alrighty then. Leary clapped to the clear air. Anna, this is Vampy, and Vampy, this is Anna. You two get to know each other while I go gather the other girls. With that, Leary disappeared through the front door, leaving you alone with the young girl. Well, what are you waiting for? Anna tapped her foot impatiently. Oh. Jesus. It's time for my daily foot rub. Didn't anyone tell you? Uh. Oh, I hate feet. God, I hate feet. I, I can't do it. I just don't like feet. Aw, oh, come on. It's your job. My feet are achy. Anna complained loudly, waving her feet aggressively in your face. Uh. I don't want to do it. It's feet. I really don't like feet. No. Aw, oh, you're no fun. So, what did you want to do then? Talk about the weather? You didn't really know how to respond to that. In your brief silence, Anna chimed in. Nice and sunny day, huh? Her expression made it pretty obvious she was fucking with you. Well, I'm bored now. See you around, whelp. Once again, before you could respond, Anna disappeared through the front door. Several moments later, Leary returned. Sorry, they were busy. They were all busy, so they aren't coming. Leary looked a bit embarrassed on behalf of her fellow dragons. Anyway, Leary clapped to punctuate her point. 
Even though none of them seem interested in meeting you, that doesn't mean you can't introduce yourself. Leary didn't seem to realize she had been kind of discouraging. We'll make that your job for today. Sounds like a plan, boss. Alright, so you've met me and Anna. Aside from us, there's three other girls living here. Ketla is training in the forest, Rix is practicing magic in her room, and Pitch is probably drunk somewhere. <laughs> I have a feeling that Pitch is my spirit animal, I swear. While you take care of that, I'm going to go pick up some groceries. Not wanting to be rude, you quickly replied, I can help if you want. Oh no no, it's fine. Go meet the other girls. I can fly, so it'll take no time at all. That seemed fair. With a simple wave, Larry left you alone in your shack. The only question now was, who should you go visit first? Okay, I have to go visit my spirit animal for Pitch. You decided it would probably be a good idea to check on Pitch first. After all, she was drunk somewhere, and you wouldn't want to lose a girl on the first day. You decided to head to the tavern, figuring it was a good place to start. After a brief jog, you arrived at the bar. Hey, Azume. The bartender looked up at you with a smile. Oh, hey, Vampy. How'd it go? Pretty well. You didn't tell me all dragons were cute girls. Azumi laughed hard heartedly at what you said. I thought it would be better if you were surprised. Now I assume you're here for pitch. As a matter of fact, I am. Is she here, then? Yep, right over there. Have fun, champ. Azumi gestured toward the corner of the bar, obscured by a support. You sauntered over there, quickly spotting the girl you were looking for. Oh my god, she's gorgeous! Oh my god, Pitch is my spirit animal, yes! Your jaw dropped for, for a moment at the sight of a pretty dragon dancing on the table. S <laughs> several of the villages... I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be villagers, but that's okay. We're gathered around, cheering and occasionally throwing money at her. Seriously, how had you never heard of these girls up until now? Now then, how did you introduce yourself to a drunk dancer? Guess the obvious way was probably the best choice. Hey Pitch, I'm Vampy, you shouted, waving your arms in the air. Luckily enough, you managed to get Pitch's attention. She swiveled towards you on the table and waved happily in your direction. Hey Vampy, you wanna dance with me? Sure, I'll do it. As a matter of fact, I do. Trying to look cool, you jumped on the table next to Pitch. Unfortunately, <laughs> your foot slipped on a wet spot and you immediately fell onto your back, knocking the breath out of you. Groaning and looking up, you saw Pitch qu laughing quite a lot at your expense. That was so funny, she announced, laughing heartedly <laughs> and continuing her dance. At that moment, Pitch let out a small burp and looked a little uncomfortable. Her dancing also slowed to a stop. Guys, I think I'm gonna... Oh god, not again. Take cover! The other patrons took several steps back, giving Pitch a wide berth. Pitch looked nauseous as she held her hand to her mouth and tumbled off the table. Um, let's catch her. I know she's probably gonna barf on me, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Pitch flopped into your arms, and she's pretty much and she pretty much immediately threw up over your shoulder. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for catching me. With that, she passed out. Good job, Vampy. That's pretty foul, though, Josh said, eyeing your vomity back. Yeah, looks like your work's cut out for you, Miss Dragon Caretaker. Well, whatever the case, this kind of thing happens a lot. We can put her to bed upstairs, or you can carry her home. Your call. Um... Should we carry her home? Yeah, let's just carry her home. I'll bring her back to the ranch. Yeah, that's probably a good call. It's never fun waking up hungover in a tavern. With that, I adjusted pitch. You adjusted pitch in your arms and began to walk back to the ranch. You casually set her down on the couch in the dorm lounge, not sure which room was hers. Well, took care of that. Now then, where should I go? All right, let's go visit Rick's. You decided to go introduce yourself to Rix next. After dealing with Pitch's shenanigans, you could use a break before wandering into the forest. You wandered around the dorm for a few moments, poking your head in various rooms until you found Rix's. Oh my god, that is so pretty. Ah, this game is so- I love this. She was sitting on her bed, casting some kind of spell. 
It seemed like Rix was very focused, and she didn't even notice you enter. After waiting a moment, you were feeling a bit bored. Um, I want to remain silent till she's finished. I, I don't want to disturb her. You leaned against the wall and just observed as Rix continued. Every now and then, her eyes would twitch silently, slightly, sorry, or she'd whisper what you assume were some magic words. Not there either, huh? Oh well. Rick seemed satisfied with whatever she was doing, and the book lowered into her lap as the magical light slowly faded. Thanks for waiting, Vampy. Thanks for waiting. I take it you're Vampy? Yep, and you must be Rick's. Nice to meet ya. Likewise. Rick shook her your hand simply. Her hands were a little cold and bony, but soft as well. Now then, did you need anything, or did you just want to introduce yourself? Um, Jesus, just straight to the point. Um, you do magic good. Uh, thanks. You could tell something you said made Rick's uncomfortable. Seems like you lost your vibe while you were nourishing. Well, I'm pretty busy, so if that's it... Okay, I'll see you later. Bye. Rix turned away and started rummaging through her various magic implements. Guess it was time to go find Hetla in the forest. Hopefully you'd bump into her before it got too dark. The forest looked a little f foreboding. Foreboding. Something words. But you gathered your courage and walked confidently in. Unfortunately, despite your confidence, that didn't really make it any easier to find Ketla. When Leary told you she was training, you imagined she'd be making some noise or something. Instead, it was quite it was an eerie quiet. As a matter of fact, it was too quiet. With years of mercenary experience, you were sure you were being hunted. Sure enough, there was a slight rustling and a dragon emerged from the shadows. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Who are you, and what are you doing in my forest? Um... Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Ketla. I hope I didn't scare you. Sometimes we get people creeping around here. No problem. The two of you sh stood there awkwardly for a moment until Kelta continued. Ketla, Ket... I don't know. That said, I should really test your strength if you're going to be living with us. Prepare to defend yourself. Jesus. You quickly grab your trusty dagger from behind your back and prepare to fight. Oh, nice. I don't know if I should attack, but she seems like she really wants to... Uh... You take a few steps back and raise your dagger defensively. Ketla gave you a punch to the stomach. You slam the bottom of your dagger into Kelta's ribcage viciously. Jesus. Um, what's this? You quickly step forward, giving Kelta a harsh shove and knocking her off balance. You dodged Ketla's attack. Oh, wow. Um, defend. You take a few steps back and raise your dagger defensively. Jesus, she is like attacking the hell out of me. Ketla jumped into the air, twirling towards you, but managed to dodge the attack. I like this. I really like this. You quickly step forward, preparing for your next attack. With a flick of her tail, Ketla managed to shatter your dagger into pieces. Impressive, you're definitely worthy of being our caretaker. You aren't too bad yourself. Ketla gave you a smile of respect. Sorry about your blade. I'll have my friend make you a new one. Your friend? Yeah, he's the local blacksmith. Perhaps you've met him? Ah, uh, I haven't, but I know him. I know of him. I think I'll take you up on that. It's a date. 
See you around then, Vampy. With that, Ketla disappeared back into the forest. Guess it was time to go find Ketla in the forest. I, we've already did that. So that was the end of the demo for Dragon Day. It kind of looped after I played that last part, so I'm assuming that's where the demo ends. But I really definitely enjoyed this little demo of this visual novel. And if you guys want to support this on Kickstarter, go over there and back it on Kickstarter. Give it anything that you can. Anything is great. And I definitely want this game to happen. So if you could go over onto Kickstarter, there's a link in the description where you can back this game. And I am super excited. So I really hope that this game goes through. I myself backed it and hopefully they can reach their goal because I really want to play this game more on my channel. It would be so much fun to play. I really enjoy the story. I really enjoy the characters. Pitch is definitely my favorite. She's like my spirit animal. So definitely go and check it out. And um, thank you guys for watching. And leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.